Earth's climate system is complex, but climate change is actually pretty simple. I'll show you why. So I'm a geologist. In addition to loving beer and rocks, we like long time scales, and we think of different parts of the planet as systems that function together to create the various processes on Earth. With this perspective, I'll give you climate change in 50 words. We've removed carbon from stable geologic storage and burned it. In doing so, we've changed the chemical composition of Earth's atmosphere. More carbon in the atmosphere gives us a warmer atmosphere. This relationship has been true throughout almost all of geologic time. Do we want to cool off climate change? We should put less carbon in the atmosphere. We should burn less fossil fuels. It really is that simple. We've known this answer since the 1960s. Imagine if we'd known the answer to other huge challenges, like the cure for cancer or how to end racism. But we know this one. OK, great. If it's so simple, then why can't we fix it? Part of the reason is that it's a problem of the collective. All nations, all people are part of the cause and the solution. Addressing climate change requires vision and trust and cooperation. And as a species, we're not always so good at those things. And there's another problem. There are forces actively fighting progress on this issue. The fossil fuel industry would rather not hasten the end of the fossil fuel eras. But why is their argument so persuasive? So I read this study. I think you'll like it. It showed that people who attend TED Talks are more intelligent than people who don't. <laughs> totally. I like that study. Oh my god, you know what? I totally made that up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't let that damage my credibility. Everything else is true. <laughs> OK, but so now you learn a little bit about cognition, how you learn new things. When you hear something new, if it feels right, it's right. You bring it on. If it's at odds with what you already know to be true, you reject it. You ignore it. We're not going there. Arguments that dismiss climate science leverage this same cognitive process to instill doubt in people. And it works. And that's what gives us our camps on climate change. Both sides feel that they're right. Nobody's going to change their mind. That's bad enough, but what's even worse is the controversy makes it seem like, oh man, I'm not going there, not getting involved. Or the opposite, like, yeah, bring it on. Let's get in and fight about it. Yeah, neither of those is particularly helpful. Notice I'm not talking about geology anymore. Humans are part of the climate system. We have to understand human behavior, too. Two years ago, I was working with NOAA on a project to understand public perception of climate issues. At first, it was really depressing, learning about climate denial and mistrust of science. But social science, thankfully, really helps illuminate the issue and helps me understand why we're so divided. First of all, the thing that a lot of people think is that, oh yeah, the pro-climate side of the issue, we get science, we're smarter. No, not true. And it's really important to know that that's not true. Both sides have similar levels of scientific knowledge. OK, so where does the divide come from? It comes from our values. We interpret issues in ways that support our worldview. That's very deep, and it's, you really can't change it. It's also why arguing doesn't work. The same facts get interpreted in different directions by different people, according to their values. You can pile on facts all day long. What it actually does is it pushes us farther and farther apart. Well, that's discouraging. But no, it doesn't need to be discouraging, because actually, America is not divided cleanly into pro and con. There's this big group in the middle. There's this wide spectrum of beliefs. The middle group, they are open to new ideas. Productive conversations can be had here. What's also really important about this is the dismissive camp is small. 11% of Americans. It feels like more, doesn't it? That voice is loud. But don't be intimidated by it. It's small. It's not representative of what most of us think. Most Americans do want action on climate change. Huge majorities agree renewable energy is important. Limits on carbon, carbon pollution are what we should do. But check this out. There are more Americans 
that support these policies than there are that think that humans are changing the climate. When I first saw that data, I thought, well, what's wrong there? No, what's going on is we actually agree on the solutions, even if we don't agree on the cause. That's extremely good news. It shows how we can actually make progress on this issue without getting buried in controversy. Cool. So I wrote an article about this for a magazine for ski and snowboard instructors. I thought, oh, what an easy audience. Two days after the article came out, the topic comes up on the discussion forum for the magazine. I think, oh, good, people are interested in my article. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was pretty ugly. The magazine got accused of being partisan and political. People blamed me personally for previous failures of science, like Noah's hurricane forecast from the past summer that wasn't quite right. People pointed out, don't worry, clearly she must have had a bad upbringing. Jesus, really? <laughs> Here's an example from a frequent contributor to the conversation. And believe me, despite the fact that I know better, I can get really caught up in rebuking this kind of science. Seriously, global cooling? Really, people? Come on. But I try to calm myself down because the same facts are interpreted differently according to different values. Adding fuel to the fire doesn't really help. Look again at these quotes. Can you see the role of values? This person is skeptical of authority. He fears his loss of individual freedoms. That's what's at the bottom of this. That's what causes him to reject the climate science. So this is what happened next. The conversation got reframed. Let's stop arguing and start looking at solutions. How can we cut carbon emissions? Who wrote this list? That same person. It's the same list I would write. It's probably the same list a lot of us would write. Once again, there it is. We agree on the solutions, even while at the same time, we're fighting about the causes. That's really good news. So that's your call to action. Let's start by looking at the values that we all have in common. Everybody wants a better future, a healthy future for our kids and grandkids. Nobody wants to waste resources. Nobody wants to leave the world worse off. Energy that's safe and clean and efficient makes sense to just about everyone. Common ground is not at all uncommon. So yeah, there's rocky areas of disagreement. You really don't need to worry about that. Let's focus on the fertile ground where we already agree. That's where we should make progress. We can move forward. Because agreeing on climate change is actually only a small step. What we really need to do is act on climate change. And how do we do that? Oh yeah, we know the answer. We need to burn less fossil fuels. And how do we do that? Man, there are opportunities for that in every aspect of our lives, from the personal level all the way up to the societal scale. The important thing is that we go ahead and do it, and we keep moving forward. The problem of climate change becomes increasingly urgent the longer it takes for us to act. I'm an optimist. I think we can solve this. And not only that, I think we'll be better for it. We all cause it, we can all solve it, but the thing we really don't need to do is fight about it. For the most part, we already agree in a common, clean, and healthy future. So join me, and let's build towards that. Thank you.